I who know nothing, whatever views I may have, in truth, if they're different or the same as any others, neither I nor any other person knows for sure if it is true, in an absolute sense. And so, beyond that, if you take it a level deeper and you peel one layer off the onion to look within one level deeper and peel off the conditioning to lay it bare to light one more layer you could say that neither or none of the views any person could construct or invent and take note of the word I choose invent to think of I prefer to use the word invent than the word to think of or the word to think up is okay it's the same as invent and so any ideas we may think up or any views we may think up any ideas we may invent or any ideas or views we may think up hmm? are imaginary it could be said or you could contemplate perhaps that we may all be lost in dream thinking dream thinking and that our brains as a programmed act of survival for evolution and the survival of the species and natural selection which is what has got us here to be human where we are starting off as bacteria and becoming even before that we don't know how life started but we know how it changed and we know how it evolved and we some people know how it's evolving um, the future isn't here yet so nobody knows how it's going to evolve further but we do know what things have caused effects on how we have evolved in the past Hmm. Or, as, or is that also dream thinking is it true what I just said or is it dream thinking have evolutionary anthropologists and paleontologists or Siri who just budded in <laughs> Do those sciences really, uh, do they have any validity? Hmm. Is maths something real? Is it universal nature? Or is it just a mental construct which only makes sense to us with the patterns we make with it? Are they, is mathematics just a butterfly that's an ink blot on a piece of blotting paper? that you fold in half and squeeze some ink onto it and make a pattern and say oh that's a butterfly but actually the butterfly is just imaginary this is a scientific argument hmm? it's a scientific argument in scientific circles they argue this is maths just imaginary and do we just think that it's real that two and one two plus one makes three because if the concept of two and the concept of one is completely imaginary anyway we can make it seem real but does the universe actually function with those principles or do we just paint those principles upon the the screen of the the empty screen of the universe do we create are we blowing bubbles I think we're blowing bubbles and is the thought of thinking that I'm blowing bubbles an illusory samsaric thought is that dream thinking is that dream thinking or is that real 
If there is no human thinking, what is the universe doing? Is the universe there at all if there's nobody to observe it? Is the universe observing us at all? Is the universe conscious? And if not, then how are we conscious if the universe isn't? Are we not within the universe? Are we not part of it, created from it, and are we not conscious? Therefore, is the universe not conscious? Or is consciousness just imaginary? Do we not need consciousness for things to be like this? To feel like this? To experience? Or to seem to experience like this? And even if this were real, or if this were a dream, being here, or seeming to be here, experiencing this, or seeming to experiencing this, does it really matter whether this experience is real or not real? Does it change anything if we say, yes, it's real, or if we say, no, it's just illusory? Do we pop into non-existence? Or does the sensation remain? Does the effect remain? Does the phenomena remain? The next argument would be, is that phenomena static and permanent and immortal and eternal, or is it in a constant changing state of flux? And because of its constant changing state of flux, does that mean it doesn't exist? That there is no individual there existing, travelling through each moment, and there is just an infinite eternal series of individuals or thoughts or feelings arising or consciousnesses, bubbles of consciousnesses arising and popping out of existence, giving way to the next bubble as it pops into existence, thinks something, feels something, experiences something, thinks it experiences something, and thinks it is having the experience of consciousness of the phenomena, and it keeps repeating, or seems to keep repeating. And is that real or not real? And is the mind that wonders if such a thing is real or not real in dream thinking? And is that samsaric dream thinking? Or is it awakened thinking? Or is it just awakenedness? And if there is any thinking going on, it's not happening in the awakenedness. It's happening in the brain. And the awakenedness is seeing each thought begin and if the awakened one is watching, when each necessary thought of the evolutionary protective instincts begin, a thought which uses memory to recognize a danger to one's own life or to one's children or to... Uh, uh, one's household or to uh, the state of safety or whatever huh? to the financial uh, stability of the household an infinite number of anything you dharmas you wish to invent notice again I use the word invent instead of think of but you can use either word can't you because are they not the same thing and is not trying to converse and agree that they are both the same thing, also not dream thinking? And does not the dream thinking stop only when we stop all of this questioning and trying to define things and to condition things for it's this, it's like this, it's like that? Because does that actually really get us anywhere? Does it wake us up? Is it dream thinking? And if it's dream thinking, and we are dream thinking, then where are we? And even more fascinating is that if we stopped dream thinking, then where would we be? Or how would it be? How would it seem? The experience. The awakened one will see the 
thought arising from the evolutionary instinct to recognize dangers and so on and so on. But when this process begins, conditioned thoughts like clouds that make shapes and forms and expand and turn in from one into many, the proliferation of thought, this process does not occur. This process is absent. There is only the original thought process and it stops right there. And beyond that is just the mere noting and a decision and action can be taken based on noting this function of evolution of the body and of the um, survival of the species processes and can be used in an impersonal and a non-involved manner to make the right decisions with mindfulness and wisdom, true wisdom, concentration, with morality, concentration and wisdom, which only happens with the awakened mind, because awakening is only found through the path of morality, purity, Concentration, so concentrated sustained effort to progress and develop and panya, wisdom, spiritual wisdom, not worldly wisdom, enlightened wisdom, illuminated wisdom. But in the end, even as much sense as that makes, my last paragraph or so, the last paragraph or so which was spoken, for I did not possess the last paragraph, for there is nobody to possess it, and there is nothing to be possessed, for nothing can be possessed or held on to. And so, between the lines, within the catch-22, lies awakening hidden right in front of our eyes which we cloud ourselves with our dream thinking so may us all now stop imagining and may us all That's right. No, there is no name for it. That's all you can name it. The thing we may all, not the thing we may all become, not the thing we may all achieve, the thing we may all attain. That thing, it doesn't have a name. That's where it lies. It lies in the stopping and the stilling the stopping and the stilling of doubt, the stopping and the stilling of dream thinking, the stopping and the stilling of greed, anger, ignorance. And with the stilling of the tendency to follow the mind and the heart and the feelings and the thoughts and to get lost in them and be carried away with them and to believe in them and then to react to them and create more formations, be they emotion formations, clouds of emotion, or clouds of thought. But what do clouds do? They dissipate. They dissipate. And reform. But what's the point? They dissipate again. They're not really there. It's only momentary. Even though the process never stops, it goes on forever. But each part of the process is momentary and no part of the process endures, including us. And so, I think, therefore I am. 
At least I think I am. At least I think I must be. And so. May we all gain some insight from this. Imagine. Imagine deeply. Imagine hard. And look at what you imagine. And when you are thinking, look at if that is imagination. Look hard within. And look at your thinking and your feeling. And look how your feelings affect your thinking. And look at how your thoughts affect your feelings. And ask yourself if this feeling and this emotion, is it not a reaction? Is it not bounding back in response to something? Is my emotion responding to my thoughts? Are my thoughts responding to my emotions? Are they caught within a chain reaction that is circular, cyclic, instead of linear or um, orbital? or spherical expanding and are all of those models imaginary dream thinking and is that the roller coaster of samsara starting again with analysis and never ending reanalysis and redefinition and re trying to make it be this or make it be that and so this is a John Spencer an imaginary person appearing to sign off. Good night, everybody.